Hello, my name is Rachel Roberts, and in this video, I want to look at differentiation in skills work for reading and listening. Teachers often worry that differentiation means preparing several different versions of every activity, something which could be incredibly time consuming. Luckily, there is a lot which teachers can do to adapt activities without much extra time or work. Let's look at reading and listening activities. Firstly, good preparation before listening or reading is key. This will help to support less confident learners while not disadvantaging stronger ones. Even as fluent speakers, if we think about what we know about a topic before we read or listen, we will probably understand more. Importantly, this kind of knowledge of the world is not the same thing as linguistic knowledge. This means that it may be a chance for students who don't usually do as well in class to show what they know. We can also take this opportunity to pre-teach any vocabulary items that could block them and cause them to lose confidence or misunderstand the text. This doesn't have to mean the teacher standing at the front and explaining the meaning of words. Students can work in groups and explain the meanings of the vocabulary items to each other. The second point to think about is the reading task. For example, can we use the same text with all the students but have alternative sets of questions? A useful principle here is that the more open a question is, generally the more challenging it is. So, for example, you can make true or false questions more challenging for some stronger students by asking them to explain the reasons for their choice or by changing the questions into more open-ended questions. You could even remove the questions altogether and ask the stronger students to write some comprehension questions themselves to give to another strong student. With listening, you can provide some extra support for weaker students by allowing them to look at the audio script while they listen the second time. Or you could even give weaker students the comprehension questions in their first language. Sometimes teachers worry that by providing easier options for students, they are encouraging them not to try. But we can gradually increase the level of challenge as students become more confident. It can also help to sometimes give students choices about which version of a task they want to try, or how many questions they answer, or how much they read in a set time. Giving students some control over their learning can be very good for building confidence. My top tip for teaching, listening and reading in a more differentiated way is to remember that we only need to make small changes to the tasks to add more challenge or more support. We don't need to provide completely different work. 